Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to introduce for the record a copy of a bill, H.R. 1678, titled the Protecting Legal Firearms Ownership Act of 2023. This bill was given to staff prior to the committee, Mr. Chairman. I ask unanimous Without objection. Consent that, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, evil is not born in the mechanisms of man, it's born in the heart of man. Been a lot of passionate discussion here today, let's call it that. There's no such thing as gun violence, ladies and gentlemen. It's only human violence. It's intellectually unsound to assign an act of violence to a mechanism of man. So we are an assemblage of people, and sometimes it's quite inconvenient to, to my colleagues that lean left, that we live in a representative republic, and we are a constitutionalist nation. So the Constitution doesn't say a lot of things we wish it would, does say some things that others don't like, but it most certainly grants every free American the right to keep and bear arms. It says that right shall not be infringed. And we have a balance of power, Mr. Chairman, as the founders intended between the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. And the executive branch is intended to have broad and sweeping authorities. And when you have an executive branch that abuses that authority, you don't change the authority, you change the executive. And that's what elections are for, and that's what we'll do. So in the meantime, we're responding to ATF oppression of our Second Amendment rights very calmly and judiciously because we have that right as American citizens to uphold our right to keep and bear arms. That's what this legislation does. Biden administration, with the stroke of a pen through ATF rule, is forcing Americans into felony possession of illegal firearms with the, with the stroke of that pen. So this legislation maintains the legal possession and ownership of a firearm or a firearm attachment according to the rule regime that existed when it was legally owned and possessed. Pretty simple response to the oppression we're seeing out of the federal government. Ms. Swearer, thank you for being here. Do you recognize that the founders intended to give broad authority to the executive branch? Uh, no, the, the authority of the executive branch, just as for all branches of government, is fairly limited, and, and certainly the executive branch is not tasked with such broad authority to create or pass or legislate laws into existence just to enforce okay. those. Solid answer. We, we can debate about that when we have more time. I would suggest that the language of the Constitution does indeed Intended is what I call executive authority. There's, there's, no, there's no votes, there's no legislation passed, there's no judicial procedure, it's executive authority. So when that executive authority is abused and infringes upon our constitutional rights, do we not, as Americans, you're a constitutionalist good lady, I'm sure, do we not, as Americans, have the right to, to respond and stand for our rights? Uh, well, certainly the congressional branch has the, the opportunity to respond uh, with all of, with both other branches for checks and balances. We can write legislation, but individual yes. Americans have that right to stand, correct? Uh, we so certainly have the right I'm, to. What I'm getting at with this is that, is that Americans were left out of this loop. They purchased a weapon legally. They went to their gun dealer, they gave their information, they had their background check, they purchased their weapon, they brought it home, they've committed no crime, and yet they've been criminalized by the Biden ATF. And my colleagues across the aisle can deny that if they want to. But what I just stated is fact. 
Mr. Chairman, I thank you for allowing me to participate in today's joint committee hearing, and I yield.